All right, look, there is no better way to start off the new year than in the Kirby and Holloway kitchen. <laughs> yeah, and today we are making soup with Chef Stuart Davis, owner of Flannery's in Fruitland and catering by Chef Stuart. And we're starting with something it's called Musgo soup. <laughs> and, and here's what it's about. If your refrigerator looks like this, then you can make Musgo soup, right? Absolutely. Is this your fridge? Yes, that's my fridge. <laughs> and, and a lot of people's fridge looks like that after the holidays, right? Yeah, the, the nice thing about the holidays is you have everybody come over and visit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you have to do something with all the little teeny things that you have left. Right. Because you, you know, you want to, you don't want to throw it away because you feel wasteful, so you put it in soup. In Musgo soup. Musgo soup. All right. So what do, what do you find in your refrigerator? Well, I have some sweet peppers, some sausage, cabbage. Cabbage is always good because it helps you get the new year going with your digestive system sure, and everything yeah. because we tend to put on a little bit of uh, um, extra weight. <laughs> but uh, onions, I had some leftover mixed vegetables, uh, potatoes, tomatoes, Brussels sprouts, beef stew, mashed potatoes, corn pudding, and spinach. Oh um, my! And you're going to put that together in gonna, a soup. We're going to make musgo soup. No, you're going to make. Oh, I'm going to make musgo soup. Ah, that's how <laughs> this it is works. my musgo soup. I'm the teacher today. You're the you're the okay, student. Okay. So what am I doing first? You put your oil in. Oil going in. This is this is already hot. Mm -hmm. at moderate heat. A lot of yep. heat. What do you do? Just here? medium heat. Okay. All right. You want to do your hard vegetables and your meats first. All right. So, so I'll you're going to put the your peppers in. Peppers. And cabbage. Going good, Jimmy. I'm, I'm supervising, right? Yes. And thank you, you're doing a great job. Okay, so that's the hard vegetables in and the meat. And the meat. Okay. And then just go on and stir it up. And that's, you just want that to kind of cook up, soften up a little bit? Right, just to soften up a little bit. Also, when you put the meat in, it gets that extra fat mm -hmm. out so you can get some of that juices um, of the sausage or ham or chicken or sausage, ham and chicken and turkey and whatever you have. <laughs> whatever you have. All right, well, that, while that's doing that, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you have some new things going on with uh, Flannery's. Right, well, uh, Flannery's has always been a restaurant. We started in 1990 downtown in Salisbury, and since then we've moved to uh, Camden Avenue and Allen Road in mm -hmm. Fruitland. Um, I have a mobile kitchen, which a lot of people talk about mobile kitchens these days. Right. It used to be hamburgers and hot dogs. Mm -hmm. Now it's turned into a lot of gourmet food. But what I've done is I, I, this mobile kitchen is not attached to the place where I deliver to. The place where I deliver to is right next door. I have 36 seats. It's open up Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because um, I do a lot of catering on the weekends. So uh -huh. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from four to eight. And it's gourmet food that's delivered out of there. So not only do I have just the original style barbecues, but I also change the menu up depending on the season, depending on wow. uh, what's fresh, what's not fresh, and do a little bit of uh, experimentation. Sure. Um, you know, we were talking about this kind, this style of food. I had some bananas at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they were getting, you know how people see the black on the bananas, right. and then you see the fruit flies? Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, what you do with the bananas, if you don't have enough bananas to make banana bread, you put them in a Ziploc bag, you put them in the freezer, freeze them until you got three or four bananas and then you can make a nice loaf of banana bread so I didn't I make, know you could do that yep I make banana bread for this week I've had cranberry orange muffins because I had cranberry sauce oh left and goodness. orange zest and just a lot of good stuff so each time you go back it might not be the same menu as the time before no nope, ever the changing the only staples that I really keep are the barbecues mm -hmm. the pit beef the pork barbecue the jerk chicken and um, the pit ham. Oh, I'll keep those, uh, homemade coleslaw, but everything else changes depending mm -hmm. on if I can go farm to a farm, uh, get farm fresh vegetables from right. the local area, get fresh fish. We have uh, rockfish stew, got fresh fish and made rockfish stew. Um, it's just it just is really cool to be able to to use the the knowledge that I have to be able to design something a little bit different. Yeah, so how's this looking in here? It looks like things are are softening up and, yep. and getting cooked. Okay, Jimmy, you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Timber two. Next, whatever you want. How would you like to do it, Chef? <laughs> How do I want to do it? Well, you know what? You've got this laid out so nice. I'm, can I just start from this side and go to that you side? You can go to this side, that side. All right, I'm gonna do side. that. Okay. So we got some potatoes. Got the potatoes. Throw right. them in. I'm going to stir. Got some spuds. <laughs> got some mixed vegetables. Yep. Okay. Got a little color going on here. Yeah, of course, all the good things like from that. the mixed vegetables. Beef stew. Beef stew. <laughs> I never would think to put beef stew and in you know, 
<laughs> yeah, and, right. And and this is about what I wind up with in the fridge mm -hmm. too. After a nice meal, you got this little bit of stuff. Well, you also have to-go containers. So you take five to-go containers, you know, from the Italian place, from the Chinese right. place, from the Mexican place. Yep, yep. And put them together. Or you can make your own specialty dish. You know, a lot of people look at it and go, you know, I can't do that because, you know, I don't have enough. I can't eat that. Right, right. Put it together. Make a soup. And if you don't like it, you've not done anything wrong. You haven't heard yeah. anything. <laughs> what else were you going to do with it? That's exactly right. All right, okay, so we got some mashed potatoes corn pudding, in. And then finally, pudding. the that's spinach. spinach. Mm -hmm. Now, this, you've got, what, tell me what this is and why do I have it here? That is instant mashed potatoes. Um, one of the things about instant mashed potatoes, which is great, if you add potatoes or rice to anything, that helps thicken up the product. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the beef stock and the chicken stock. If it's thin and you want it thicker, wait, bring it up to a boil, add a little bit of instant mashed potatoes instead of cornstarch right. or, or flour and water or making a roux. Just add some instant mashed potatoes. It'll bring it up to a boil. It seems like people always have a little bag of instant mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, so. In, and if you use a whole bag or a whole box, you're doing something. So you sprinkle a little bit in until it thickens up, and then you have your hose. Because this is your creation. Absolutely. Do right. what you want. That's well, the way it goes. We're going to continue making this. He's putting the, the broth in now. Yep. We'll the chicken and then, stock and beef stock. And we come back, we're going to see the finished product oh, oh, and oh. taste it. Delmarva Life, we'll be right back.